this guy, his his, uh, his screen name is Confused. Oh, it's on this one. My best performing video, believe it or not, is a first lane HELOC video. Okay. Okay. Now this is one that, uh, 10 replies. Okay. This is one that uh, DeAndre and I have already addressed in detail, but perhaps it, I think this is an important point. Okay. So he's talking about, um, so this is, uh, his name is Confused. I think that's perhaps an app screen name, but your premise that the mortgage uses amortized interest versus the HELOC using simple interest is factually incorrect. Amortized interest doesn't exist. There's simple interest and compound interest. Mortgages and HELOCs calculate interest the same way. Search the internet to verify what I have said is true. Okay, second, you can make extra payments to the principal on a mortgage at any time. That will actually reduce the interest part of your next payment. Third, interest rate definitely matters. Higher interest rates results in higher interest costs. Sorry, that is just how math works. And then, yeah, then he starts yelling at me. But, but you know, his second and third point, I don't really object to. Yeah, you can make extra payments to the principal. And yeah, that will reduce the interest part. Yep. And interest rate does matter. No one's saying interest rate doesn't matter. It does matter. That's true. All things being equal, lower interest rate is better, but all things are not equal. But this first point I think is important. So amortized interest versus simple interest versus compound interest. He's yeah. kind of saying we're we're creating an artificial distinction here, and really HELOCs and mortgages calculate interest the same way. So do you want to address the difference between simple interest, amortized interest versus compound interest, and what is the significance of those differences Yep. As it pertains to velocity banking. Yeah, this was an area that I myself had to improve in. So before I dive into that, I'd love to understanding of it. Would you say that amortized interest, simple interest are, are different things? Are they the same thing? Do you agree with him on that point? That they're the same thing? Or no, I think that yeah, no, I think they're different. And okay. the way that DeAndre Clayton explained it is what matters is the passage of time. There is such a thing as simple interest, but it only exists for a time frame. There is no such thing as infinite simple interest. So what that means is simple interest to me means the interest doesn't get added to the principal if you don't pay it, but it only exists for a time frame. Right. So for your typical first scene HELOC, you're going to have a 10-year now, actually, some of them have 30 year, but let's just say a 10 year draw period during which time you have simple interest. After that 10 year draw period, then it becomes amortized. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, whole life insurance. You take out a policy loan. It's simple interest on mm -hmm. that policy loan. If you don't pay any interest for a year, Com that interest then gets added the next year. Right. And then it compounds. So simple interest is different. Right. And then amortized means the, the schedule of interest is preset. When you look at an amortization table, right? It'll tell you with each payment, here's how much principal you pay. <clears throat> here's how much interest you pay. And you can accelerate that schedule some by paying extra principal payments. That's true. Mm -hmm. But but you still are on that same schedule, right? Logan, I'm impressed. This is good. So I really, I really, <laughs> Thank you. I really Thank like you. what you said there, because for many years, I myself, amortize interest, simple interest are two different things. That is a half truth. So just to correct the one thing there, what you're when we say when the velocity bank gurus and content creators say that amortized interest versus simple interest, it's a half truth. There is like a difference. You could say that well, the words being used are different. As to declare a loan from a home equity line of credit, simple interest first ten years, then amortized later on. Mortgage amortized the whole duration of thirty years. From that standpoint, true. As for how the interest is calculated. It's actually the same, right? Okay. So I learned uh, recently, it was more like this year and, and last year, and I kind of com got confirmed this year, but I, I really sat down with a mortgage expert. And what he told me was amortization, to your point, is a form of payment. It's, it's, a, it's a duration of time. To DeAndre's point as well, giving him credit, like it's, it's about the time that gets passed. When Velocity Bank and Guru say something like, the interest on your mortgage is front loaded right? All the interest is up front. And it's like, yes, you pay more interest in the early years of your mortgage. And by getting ahead of that would cancel it again, half truth, but that doesn't mean that the mortgage institutions or the banks are nefarious and doing an evil strategy of just front no, 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 interest no. at the beginning. And that's kind no. of how we, we paint the picture. <laughs> that's how we paint the picture. Just so you know, the landscape of velocity banking gurus is there a lot of them have not figured out or they're just in their own echo chambers where they made amortization to be the enemy 
and simple interest is your best friend and not realizing that they're technically the same thing. So to, to recap here, amortized interest, simple interest is the same thing. The only thing in life is simple and compounding. And then amortization is a form of payment but it still doesn't negate what the velocity banking gurus and, and content creators have been saying is that yes, if we can acquire a line of credit revolving simple interest and it's not compounding, it's just simple interest those first 10 years and you have the option with these lines of credits to pay principal first, interest on the due date or principal and interest each and every time that you make a payment. So there's a lot of flexibility in, in how interest gets calculated. When you're on a fixed amortized mortgage loan, all of the interest has been assumed for the duration of that loan. It's, it's assumed, it's laid out. It lets you know, you get that 30 year amortization schedule, you'll know exactly how much interest you'll pay each and every month if you just make the, the regular old payment. Inside of a home equity line of credit, you have the ability to make these lump sum payments to that mortgage and effectively accelerate the timeline of that amortization because you've applied principal. So you, you just canceled interest and you rerouted a portion of that interest. Now it's up to you, Velocity Banking Strategy, to make sure that we do not overpay compared to what you took out of that amortization loan. So that, that was something that I struggled with. And I think a lot of people still get confused and I've made content to improve over time saying, look, I'm no longer playing the battle of amortization versus simple interest because they're technically the same thing. What we're, what we need to hone in on more is time pass, right? And understanding where are we in your amortization loan? If we're within the first five years of that amortized loan, whether it's a two or a 6% mortgage, the way they set up the payment with these banks, typically, whether it's 2%, whether it's three, whether it's four, five, six, you're always gonna pay roughly two and a half times the original uh, purchase price of the home. So it's like, it yeah, doesn't, doesn't yeah. matter if it's two, it doesn't matter if it's six, it's like you're always gonna pay at least two and a half times, more, more than likely, of of the home over that 30 year duration. So now- But the, 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 but the payment schedule is rigid correct. with the numbers, meaning that you, know, you have a, let's say it's a $2,000 monthly payment. No matter how much you pay in principal, you still have that two thousand dollar monthly payment due right. until the whole thing is paid off. Exactly. Whereas with Buck, it's an interest only payment, and if you dump a bunch of principal in, your required payment goes down. Correct. Which that doesn't happen with the amortized. Which means more cash flow or more money going to principal consistently. So, right. in the world of velocity banking, here's another sort of uh, uh, argument that the person that says that the rate doesn't matter, another half truth here, but you could make a strong argument that the interest rate on the HELOC almost doesn't matter. When you, when you line up someone that, let's say Logan buys a home for 600K, mortgage 6%, Denzel buys a $600,000 home, first lien, 9.5%. Logan has a lower rate. Zell has a higher rate, nine and a half. Logan's payment on 600K is probably like $4,000 or something, some change, right? My payment is 600,000 times 9.5% divided by 12. That's gonna be my payment. So my whole paycheck, let's say Logan and I both make the same amount of money. You can make the argument that I can most likely get out of debt faster than Logan because chances are my closing costs were cheaper than his instead of going right. with the, the origination fees and loan fees. So chances are my cost to get in was cheaper. So now I'm ahead out the gate. And you can also make the argument that when life events occur and things happen, he has to stop. Logan has to stop paying off his mortgage to handle that life event. I kept paying down my mortgage. I pulled from the equity, handled the life event and kept going. There was no delay in, in pay down. Whereas Logan has a delay. He now has to kind of, okay, life just happened. All right, this happened. Okay, let me get back into it. What's my cash flow? All right, at the end of the month, I'll make a payment of this month. He now has to remind himself to make that payment. Whereas Denzel, it's like money's coming in, expenses are going out, cash flow positive, interest gets swiped. And the, the amount of interest that I'm paying on principal each and every month goes down faster than Logan's consistent 
$4,000 payment, right? So that's where it's like the, again, the value of liquidity, like these immeasurable things start to stack up in my favor over, over mm -hmm. Logan's, right? Uh, but I still, you know, in my world, I'm still like, let's not just go with any HELOC. Let's find the best, right? And then right. let's incorporate sure. credit sure. cards and let's incorporate all these different things to, to improve it. Uh, but that's a big one, amortized versus simple. For everyone watching, it's the same thing. Release stress, okay? It's, <laughs> it's basically the same thing. They're simple and compounding. Those are your two different types of interest. Amortized is a form of payment. All we're looking to solve for is understanding the time that has passed. If you're at the tail end of that 6% mortgage, that 2% mortgage, and you go and get a 9% HELOC to try and accelerate, you're probably running bad math. It probably right, won't make right. sense. Once right. you see, there's a, 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 again, not gospel, but like a general rule for me when I look at people's mortgages and stuff, when principal and interest, that's a, a first sign, VB, Velocity Banking, May, not so when your mortgage payment and you look at it and you see how much is going to principal and how much is going to interest when it's 50 50 dude you've already paid the bank a lot of profit right you've already <laughs> they've already pretty much got their money back uh, almost at this point and now they're in profit margin right when you see principal is above 50 you're in the 60 70 and there's only like 30 percent going to interest velocity banking will only typically make sense if the rate is equal or less than what the mortgage is equal or less than typically right this is when we're fighting over dollars and cents at this point right and and when i work with my clients i'm like look i'm not going to try and fight over dollars and cents i'm not going to force this strategy to work in your favor especially if you're a newbie right and you're just getting it going um you might be at a point where we really maybe don't need to do velocity banking here on your mortgage in fact we might take velocity banking instead of paying off this mortgage that you have a fixed cost in of living maybe we leverage velocity banking to invest and say this is how much you're paying in interest every month in a year do you think we could invest the cash flow that you were going to send to your mortgage and possibly get a higher rate of return not just higher than the rate on your mortgage because that's also bad math but it needs to be like double or, or triple. Could we get double or triple somewhere else or invest in your skill to increase your income and then have the option to pay off your mortgage in full via a check? You just write a check mm -hmm. in the same amount of time it would have taken you to pay this off by making extra payments. So let's say it mm -hmm. was, let's say it was 3.5 years with um, extra, no velocity, right. three and a half years. You're like, oh, that sounds great. I'm 55, I'll be 58 and a half when this is all said and done, then I can retire right at 59. Great strategy. Or you might say, could I take that cash flow over the next three and a half years and triple my money, quadruple, 5x, 10x my money, and then write a check, boom, pay, home got paid off in the same amount of time, 58 and a half, and I have 4x more cash flow, more, more assets. That's, you know, again, that's still velocity banking. So we didn't throw it out. We, we did and. We did snowball and velocity in this example, right? Maybe you, maybe you sent an extra hundred dollars just to make you feel good at night, you know, an extra couple hundred bucks and you took the rest and invested it. Again, back to my framework here. It's like velocity banking, debt snowball, I think work great together. Doesn't always make sense. Debt snowball always makes sense. Debt snowball is a measurement for velocity banking success. Not every tool works. Look for the best terms. Don't force it. Always run the numbers, right? If the rate is if the rate you're trying to pay off is higher than your debt tool, most likely an automatic win right there, right? And there's, you know, back to discipline, stewardship, these different things. Dude, this may, th I get, I get fired up with this stuff, getting on these calls with these clients, helping people and just seeing, you know, their, their energy explode through the phone, you know, or if it's a zoom, I see them light up and they smile and they get happy because they're like, Wow, yeah, I, I, can, I can see this. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's very, very clear. I know what this cost will be. And if life happens, I know how to handle it, right?